Hey guys, I am George's virtual assistant. Today I want to take some time on sharing with you a video on why film blacklisting is the worst and most unhelpful offense against filmmaking. Today I am not going to shit on top of film blacklisting but rather list a few reasons why it is just very toxic and destructive for film and why it should be done less than usual. So let's get to it. Worst of the year listing is the most unacceptable way to articulate why you don't like a film. All a person or article does is just shit on top of the movies that they found disappointing and pinpoint them as the baddest ones on a public scale. It just as bad as trying to tell everyone in your class that one of your students is dumb because he failed a test or got bad grades and so you list him as the worst student of the year. This already makes the filmmaker feel inferior and therefore creates controversy and hostility between moviegoers and critics. Would anyone like it if instead of offering helpful and constructive criticism one would come in and tell everybody why his film sucks and it deserves to be blacklisted as the worst? Well if you've suffered from that terrible experience you'll get my point. Nowadays we need to understand why we are out here. We are out here to offer constructive feedback and make a film franchise or filmmaker grow and get better each and every way and not shit on him or his project making him look like a fucking criminal. This already angers me on a personal level because this is what a kid would do if he had nothing to do at home besides getting grounded and shitting his pants. Number 2 it is profoundly subjective. Film articles are based on actual objective facts, data and information but on strange but constant occasions some articles, especially the ones relating to film blacklisting, have been far too personal and subjective in the critic's perspective. In a lot of articles opinion is based on what the publisher personally thinks and feels about the particular subject which it can differ from the ones of others and therefore it is not credible or reliable unless the critic has some really valid points that could actually have an impact on the film's critical consensus. But instead a person just blabbers about what was wrong with the films in a way that is just rude and impolite. Here are a few articles that prove my point. Okay now, here is a well-structured article from Looper that was written and published by Mike Floorwalker. It greatly exemplifies and demonstrates what film constructive criticism really is and how it is structured. Sure he does say some rude things but at least he supports his opinion with valid arguments regarding what elements belong to a movie that make it a good experience. The writer's manner of articulating his disapproval and problems with the top listed film's flaws is more practical, reasonable, descriptive and eloquent because it is based on true evidence and a mildly but constructive speaking tone instead of it just being completely personal complaints regarding the person's own feelings and sentiments that he should better keep to himself instead of publishing it for everyone else to see it. The 2019 movie Replica was a movie directed by Jeffrey Romanoff and starring Keanu Reeves as the main character that had great potential to execute a well-told and compelling sci-fi story. Upon initial release the movie had some hype but it ended up disappointing critics and audiences earning a tragic score of 9% in Rotten Tomatoes. But on Looper, the article has a very good way of viewing this film critically. Sure he uses some inadequate slang terms along the way but he convincingly expresses his own opinions, sustains them with arguments and backup and then concludes to what it is will be qualified as. But that is not to say that the conclusion states that this movie is necessarily bad but rather flawed in nature, which is a better way of expressing it. But don't worry guys. He is not just reviewing that one in the list. There are lots more but let's just leave it to that and hop over to the next example. Now, hopping over to the more destructive and negative part of film criticism. Right here is an article by Daily that was written and published by Julia Hay. She tries to bring a more satirical, sarcastic, ironic and mocking approach to her critical viewing of the listed films. It is ironic for me to speak and remain calmly about this matter but given that this is a video about constructive feedback I will just try to keep the peace and not start a war against critics. Yeah, so she continues to talk about the same movie I spoke of previously in the last section but in a more insulting tone. And I like I said she doesn't provide any facts or any data from which we can engage her opinion on. 
although she does mention its metascore and tomatometer but those are other sources. This a different and separate one so it doesn't count. It's just offensive that with every single film she provides very little concrete points of her own perspective and just continues to complain like a little kid and therefore destructively putting them down like a bully. Number 3 this is what the previous reason has been leading me to book, and it is just that. It is a waste of time. Worst of the year listing is a complete time wasting machine when it comes to wasting dozens of energy on just talking crap about a film or group of films and making it look bad in front of everyone without any valid facts or data. Many critics just pinpoint them as bad without providing understandable facts that would explain their opinion a lot better. Instead they spend many hours, days, weeks, months, years and centuries of repeating the same damn thing over and over until it starts to feel like a fucking time loop. Witches list them as the worst without any clear reasons other than oh this movie sucks, it's dumb, it doesn't know what it wants to be etc. If you don't know how to articulate what you didn't like about something then what is the point of making a long fucking video on YouTube or waste time publishing articles based on shitting on movies? What good is it? This is just another opportunity for critics to shit on movies and underestimate directors publicly. But time and time again we release each year worst of the lists just to clickbait and draw attention from the community. I think that all this wishy-washy clickbait crap needs to stop and start taking action to bring real film criticism from the ground up and use our time more wisely and for more practical purposes. Number 4 And last but not least, this reason will conclude this topic given that this video is so fucking long for which I apologize. But anyways, constructive criticism can come in either private or public form without any motives to offend or annoy. The perceiver smartly takes what he likes and discards the rest. Not get but that because the film or person didn't completely match with his strict expectations like some critics. It is sent or told to the person when he has done something in an incorrect form or has made a mistake. But when it comes to black year listing, how worse could comments go if you're just putting down the movie? I am not saying that generally every articles or video about this topic is done this wrong but as of late this is becoming more and more common and people find it funny. Now I have no problem with that but it still bothers me that almost nobody doesn't seem to question this kind of thing or even talk about it in the internet. People claim that we can do this kind of thing because we have the right to freely express ourselves in the media but how far can one go as to express him or herself in a way that angers another. And overall film blacklisting is one of the worst ways to express your own opinion publicly. It angers filmmakers. It can create controversy. It is profoundly unnecessary to even exist as a form of criticism and sure some articles are constructive but as of late this topic is going completely astray to a path that will lead film nowhere. Thank you so much for watching this video and sorry it took so long but I hope it taught you something as much as it once taught me. If you want you can give this video a like and follow our channel on IGTV and YouTube to not miss any upcoming content. And I'll see you all on the next one.